been a Black Angus Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Old. This will be full of spoilers and I will be touching on the comic it's based on, Sandcastle. That's right, this film is another comic movie, uh, but there's a lot of liberties taken. Uh, I feel it pretty much hits everything in the book. This really adds to and changes, tweaks a few things where it's not exactly the same. Um, and admits one key thing in the ending uh, to tell its own story. And it's crazy. Um, right away, if you're coming in wondering about the comic Sandcastle by uh, Swiss author Pierre Oscar Levy, uh, the twist ending is not from the book. It is an M. Night Shyamalan uh, thing. It, you know, it's, a, it's his twist. Signature Pepsi twist by uh, M. Night. I really love this film. I give it 8.5. I may fluctuate 9 or 8, but it's it's really solid. Cinematography, the uh, premise of the film and the fear it, it brings about, and I think the existential dread of time, uh, it really hits the nail on the head. Um, taking this abstract concept and making it very much a pertinent in the physical world right now uh, element that you're always cognizant of. Um, so, the, like I said, the twist is an add-on by M. Night, and the beginning, uh, introduction into this vacation is as well. Um, so, what transpires, it's a simple concept, M. Night, or, uh, there's a beach that, uh, you're, uh, for whatever reason, you're kind of in this bubble, in this cove. You can't escape it going over, you can't go through the channel you came through, you can't swim out, you'll black out and end up back... Uh, in your path, there's some sort of force field or energy, what have you, uh, preventing you to escape. And um, so that's probably why a lot of people drown, like the first one we see. The way this film shot right from the start, it uh, makes you think that there might be some connection with uh, the black guy, rapper mid sized sedan in this world, and uh, the white girl that drowns. And that becomes permanent throughout the plot with this character. And I do think it was in my. Uh, kind of hinting at racial profiling and assumptions, uh, but it didn't feel preachy. It felt uh, reasonable. It felt like, oh yeah, that's a thing that you know. Of course, black guys getting blamed. Uh, <laughs> I think we've all seen that to some degree in life, even before uh, the recent uh, bout of politics uh, utilizing that narrative. Um, but yeah, so this. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot to talk about this film, so it may take me a while. But yeah, this film, uh, the beginning, you have this couple, uh, with two kids, they're going to the beach, and there's always this talk of time, and uh, the, the woman, the wife, always seems stuck at work, and she's kind of stuck in the past. She can't just like live in the moment. And then uh, there's reference to the husband always looking to the future. He's never like in the present either, and it's there's a little dialogue here and there that. Uh, Adds to the element of time in this film. Uh, I got two kids, and you learn that uh, they are separating, and that she has a tumor that may be in play for, as to why they're separating, but um, they're just growing apart. And again, the way they view time kind of uh, personifies everything wrong with their relationship. They're going two different ways, and uh, they're trying to have this vacation to give the kids one nice little. Uh, shindig before they start you know destroying the family and uh yeah so then they go to breakfast the next day the son makes a friend that does coding uh like uh, secret codes and uh they you end up seeing a couple other people uh like a, a there's a family doctor a trophy wife their daughter and mother-in-law with the dog there's uh this uh, asian male nurse and uh, his girlfriend who's a therapist having seizures and you're like okay you know and there's little things like uh the the trophy wife hints at calcium deficiency and questioning if the drink really has calcium for her and you think well, what, what is this you know well, it becomes very pertinent later and this is the brilliance of this film um but uh yeah they end up like getting told like hey there's like the secret spot take you if you, if you want to go you know you tell the best customers about this little cove and it's like oh cool great well uh and they get dropped off this giant ass basket full of food that seems pretty ridiculous for say 12 hour stay on the beach 
And they're like, ah, oh, whatever, kids eat a lot. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the trophy wife and husband uh, come, and then uh, the Asian guy and his girlfriend. And, uh, yeah, then they, they come across uh, mid-sized Dan. He seems weird and off to himself. And you wonder if this is going to be some sort of boogeyman shit man in black or something uh, uh something like the stan character just kind of hovering around he thought maybe he would be the bad guy maybe that was m night kind of saying something about herself i don't know uh but you know he's always nose bleeding he was around that uh girl who you find out later is dead washes up so like there's things to point the blame to him the, the suspicion so uh, that's some clever meta things from m night uh but yeah, they uh, find the dead girl, and then like the mother-in-law dies, and then the dog dies, and they start figuring out, like, wait, wait, and then like the twist, big twist in the, you know, the hook from the trailer, the kids have aged up by years, you know, the little kids and the like prepubescent girl, now she's got uh, tits, and uh, the boy is like, uh, you know, grown a foot or two, and you know, he's, he's like 10 or 11. And so, like, the, the, the people think they're playing a joke on They think the mom's in on it. And it's like, where's my kids? And she, she doesn't recognize them. <laughs> and, uh, so this is when the pandemonium starts. And then, like, the doctor, he doesn't have a physical ailment or anything, but he is dealing with, like, dementia or something. He starts, like, forgetting. He keeps like, hey, you remember that movie, Jack Nicholson? And he can't ever, you know, get the title. And he gets really mad and frustrated. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, like it was kind of comical, but like unnerving at the same time. The, the actor really executed that very well, um, and great casting for the kids and their like teen counterparts and adult counterparts. Uh, but yeah, essentially, they're aging. They're starting to figure out shit. Things are going awry. The body's decaying rapidly uh, of the dead girl and like the, the mother-in-law. And uh, even though this boy is six, he ends up. Uh, with the, the doctor's daughter, they off, go off and they're kind of bonding. And so then, like, it, it gets kind of unsettling uh, because you know that they were just kids a few hours ago, but now they're pubescent and um, coming of age and now they're comforting each other. And, like, right away, she ends up getting pregnant afterwards because things are so fast. And it's unsettling. And it's also, you know, unsettling because the they, they're still mentally kids. They've only lived for, you know, a day not even not even a day up to that point and now she's pregnant when she was not even pubescent yet and she's got a big belly and it's like oh we just she ate too much or something haha <laughs> it's like you're pregnant what the you know and uh this is a twist in the comic so in the comic she does have the baby and uh it grows old with them and ends up you know you assuming dying on the beach after everyone else is dead she's the youngest but she makes through that first day of being a baby. Um, this film, M. Night, he twisted that. He fucking made this baby die. And it was like, fuck. Like, not only did you have the shock of <laughs> of this baby being born from essentially babies, you know. Uh, but, like, the woman who delivered it sitting on a towel. And it was like, ah, it's dead. Because it, it needed food so fast you couldn't keep up with it. Um... And, and then it later on becomes Bones. Um, there's a lot of just talk about time throughout this. That, that's like the one of the huge shocks. There's a couple of obvious things, like I said. I think I've said my reaction. That uh, they kind of distract you, but then boom, it pops up. So maybe that was in Night's Way trying to be a little more clever with some obvious things. At play, like the Asian guy used to be on the swim team. He thinks, hey, I need to swim about 100 uh, pool links or football field links out get around this cove you get to another part of the beach but with this force field it ends up that uh they probably died drowning hitting that wall and blacking out whatever this spear is and uh they kind of learned uh i can't remember where this happens but they find this uh i guess where the tide comes in against like the cliffs there's a bunch of deposits of like old rusted forks and shit and baskets of food and everything from before barbies and swim tube so it's very clear other people have died here and uh one of them happened to have left a journal of some sort with details and it assumed that like there's some sort of mineral issue that might have been caused it. so the way i can kind of summarize it if you've seen the film annihilation how there's been some sort of 
uh, extraterrestrial organic material crashing and it's slowly ballooning out uh, like cancer and growing exponentially. I think of it like that, but contained. So it's one little area. The world is completely different, and that's with time. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so you see all these different rounds. People try to get out, they go through the channel, try to hop over it, swim out. Nothing works. You black out. And if you go through the water, you die because you drown. Um, at some point, uh, you know, the mom and dad end up kind of reconciling. M Night do this really cool thing like, the woman is going deaf and the man's going blind. So he blurs the camera for the man and he uh, showed the deafness in one ear by like having the actor like turn with the camera. And then like when she has her ear towards the people, it's like, oh, there's nothing. And she like covers her ears. She hears nothing. And then it's like, oh, fuck, I'm deaf in this ear. And it was kind of obvious, but the way he did it, it was unsettling. This whole cam work in this film, I think, it's a lot of good wide shots. There's a lot of middling shots or like uh, simple blurring uh, focus uh, looking, you know, say 10 feet away versus one foot away from the camera uh, to kind of convey emotions and, and uh, intrigue. Just a lot of good stuff here. Um, a lot of, you know, things you don't see in, in new shows or, or movies uh, with blockbusters. Uh, this guy is a filmmaker. I really like that. Um, but yeah, uh, the family dies uh, right before that. The doctor, in his crazy state, tries to attack them with the knife on the beach. She ends up blood poisoning him with rust, one of the rusty knives. He dies fast. The trophy wife. Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting with time and stuff was that you had the trophy wife, which beauty is ever fading for women. As soon as they get on the beach, she's getting her phone out for Instagram posing. I felt that was kind of some social commentary as well about vanity and misplacing our time, uh, with that kind of thing. Because I don't think M. Night would be a guy that really cares about vanity like that. Um, that was just a little wrinkle. But yeah, she has like an old witch hag, Quasimodo or Effielti's kind of uh, degrading of her body because the calcium was key and uh, her body corrodes because time goes so fast she heals fast she breaks an arm but then it heals weird and it keeps breaking and she turns into this weird uh you know worse than FELT's like just deformed freak at the end you know um so it, it felt kind of like a fairy tale with that um <clears throat> one of the other twists of this is that um of course the the two kids have the child uh, on the beach having sex growing up really fast uh, the sister also does in the book, and this she kind of maintains her purity as far as we know, even though it's hinted that like there's some sort of attraction to mid-sized Sedan, the black uh, rapper who's you know in question with uh, being guilty of what they think is a murder. Um, the other twist is that in the comic I just read, uh, the character that f fills in for mid-sized Sedan, he's actually Arab in the Swiss or French-based book. Um, he tells a story about death at the end when they're all kind of huddled up and the, all the old people have died. Now they're going to bed and probably going to die before they wake up. And he tells them uh, the story about uh, a, a half man who like comes to take your spirit. And this guy's like, no, 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 let me live for, you know, give me seven years. And he's like, okay, you got uh, between now and seven years and I'll come when you leave when you don't expect it. And so this guy makes this whole fortification around himself he tells his men to not let anyone in and he's only got one window to look through in this fort fortification and his wife his son his daughter they're all have been turned away by orders of uh the king so like he never gets informed of shit in this story and uh then the half man comes and he's like oh what about this and that and you know he realizes like he never even touched snow when he looks at the mountain through the window and he wasn't ever involved after that point with his family, you know? So it's all about, you know, utilizing your time well. And I thought that was a really good message and the way him like conveys it, like really sticks with you. You can hate this film, but I think you'll really hate it for how visceral it was in uh, how it delivered. Uh, but yeah, so it ends with uh, uh, the kids are like in their fifties now and they're like, oh, I got about 13 hours until we should be dead. So. Uh, you want to like make a sandcastle 
And so they go about doing that. And, <laughs> and then it dawns on the kid, uh, on the man now, oh yeah, my friend from the, the resort left me a coded message. Let me decode it. And it's like, oh, my uncle hates coral. And so that becomes the key. The coral is like a portal to get out of this, you know, steer this realm, whatever. And uh, he does a couple of tricks where you think maybe the sister dies. But uh, there's a detail that's very key. Earlier in the film, at the beginning, the kid goes around on the beach resort asking, like, Hi, I'm Blank and Blake. What do you do? What's your occupation? What's your name? And so he knew that one of those guys was the cop. Turns out uh, when they escaped this fucking beach, they kept the journal. And it had all these names of missing people. So he gives, gives it to them and says, like, Hey, call your guys to investigate this. And uh, so that's essentially... Um, a loose thread that uh, destroys this whole operation. The twist of this movie. I can't really see what people talk about this. Um, this is a huge medical operation. So yeah, there's some sort of uh, rock or something contained, like it's an asteroid or something, uh, in this lab. So it turns out the drinks they give you, the cocktails, were actually based on your medical history and issues. They are testing medicine on you. Uh, in a contained way that they can ex they can test the efficiency of a medicine for whatever illness in a day's time given the patients and you learn that they're on like test 73 so 70 other group 72 other groups of people have died on the speech for medical testing they don't really explain what the uh, mineral is the makeup of the beach that causes this anomaly. I guess you just kind of go with like Bermuda Triangle kind of just conspiracy theory. Um, but they there there is this argument about well you know moment of silence for the dead who have been a sacrifice for the greater good of millions. And there's something to be said about that. That's kind of the end all story of being a soldier. Is, uh, you take the bullet for however many countless people uh, at home. That's the risk you sign up for. But that's a voluntary thing. So it's a huge ethical issue. Um, but it's also unsettling, you know. And uh, well, the cool thing, the observer, the guy who brings him to the beach, in my Shyamalan, that's his cameo, like always in his films, he cameos. He cameos as a guy watching people. And... Um, it's kind of spot on because he is a director. And so he's watching people uh, as this villainous character. And like I said earlier, there's like little things that feel like maybe it's meta towards the audience uh, viewing this whole debacle. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I like the twist. I do feel it's going to be like Tim Cloverfield Lane, a very concise story that if you're engaged in. And then the last little bit is just off the wall like is this from another movie i didn't mind it. i thought it was cool i would love if he like had broke this into like the unbreakable universe somehow if these are like some villains for uh the sears the overseer's son to battle or something i i don't know that's just a little idea to throw out there but i know it might got at least another film for universal um i enjoyed this because it made me dig into a new comic i didn't know about so um yeah one thing i'll say with the comic is uh there is consistent nudity of the children character because like in the uh movie the kids are aging so their pants are and their bathing suits are getting too tight and so they have to keep like get, you know until they age up appropriately they have to keep giving them like new clothes um that's something that's not accounted for in the book so it's like they're nude uh or in a towel um if that's something that uh you can't deal with that you can't handle um then i suggest refraining from the comic if that's something that's going to stand out for you but otherwise i think it's really cool um kind of guillermo del toro kind of just like a, a lullaby of a fable you're like what you know it's not really an explanation it's just you know really the lesson about time um i don't know i think people can pick apart the the plot uh loop plot holes or whatever but uh, you know it, being engaged is just a straight audience member i was enamored and enthralled by this film uh i've always been a Shyamalan fan even if he's had a bad film or two like the happening um so i'm glad to see him back i'm glad to see a fresh take um 
<laughs> a fresh taken film uh, with kind of standard stuff we get. Uh, have you seen old or have you read Sandcastle? What did you think? If you've done both, what do you like about the contrast of the two works? Let me know in the comments. Um, this is my take again, 8.5 out of 10. Would buy on Blu-ray or 4K. Uh, definitely go check it out and see for yourself. Thank you for joining, and I will talk to you all later.